So this video is not going to be a big scripted, uh, fancy edited thing. I just wanted to quickly talk about something I've been looking into. Um, I've been using Golang a little bit at work, um, and I think it's really cool. I've had a really good time using it. Um, I'm not a C programmer by any means, but Go is really easy, and um, you can do a lot of cool things with it. Um, and I discovered recently that it can compile directly to a DLL file, and so I thought, of course, can go make a DLL file that works as a game maker extension? Uh, and it turns out the answer is yes. Um, and so I want to share everything that I've learned so far, uh, and hopefully somebody will find it interesting. Maybe somebody will make something cool with it. Uh, so to get started, the first thing you'll need to do is make sure that you have Go installed. The best way you can do that is to go to the official website, go.dev, uh, click download, and then download the one for Windows. Uh, I'm not going to do it now because I already have it, but it's a pretty simple installer. You download it and you kind of just hit next all the way through until you're done. Once you have that, uh, the other thing you're going to want to do is get the TDM uh, GCC compiler. Uh, I'm showing you a Stack Overflow answer because I already had uh, a different one, uh, this one I believe, but it didn't work for me and I found the answer over here. Um, so you'll want to get the download either from this page or this person in Stack Overflow links the SourceForge page. I will put all these links in the description of this video, uh, but I'm just showing you where I got it because I had to do some digging to find it myself. And just real quick before we continue, um, there were a couple of steps uh, regarding the installation of the TDM GCC compiler, and they have some screenshots here, so I just wanted to show you. Uh, when you open up the window, you want to hit Create, and then you want to make sure that this bottom option is selected, 32-bit and 64-bit, uh, and then you can leave all of this as it is and hit Install. Uh, and that's all you need to know for this. Uh, once you have all that installed, though, you're pretty much ready to go. Those are the only two dependencies. Um, and so you'll want to open up some code editor of some kind. I use uh, Visual Studio Code, VS Code. Uh, open up a folder. And uh, you'll also, if you're using VS Code, that is, you'll also want to get the Go extension, which I've also installed. Uh, this just gives you the nice stuff like syntax highlighting and auto completion and all that good stuff. Um, although I will say when I installed this um, and I opened up my Go file, it came up with some errors in the bottom right, um, but they had buttons on them that said install that allowed me to install whatever missing thing I had, so it was pretty easy to fix. Just in case you install this, you might run into that yourself. Uh, but once you have that done, you're pretty much good to go to create your Go project. Um, and I am going to show you the basics of how to put a DLL together, but this is definitely not a Go tutorial. I'm still very much learning it myself. Um, so I'm just outlining some of the stuff that I learned and kind of just getting you right to the point and, and seeing something that works. So either use a separate command prompt or PowerShell or use the integrated one in VS Code. And uh, once you have Go installed and everything, you should be able to do go mod init. Um, and it's telling me that I did it wrong because you need to provide um, the name of your module, um, which is a Go specific thing. But for now, you can just put anything you want. I'll put example at the end and it will tell you creating new go mod and that gives you this file. Um, this is something if you use external modules with uh, go they'll show up in here but for us we don't really need to worry about that because this is not going to be a super in-depth uh, example. So once you have that in, in place you can make your go file. I'm gonna make it main.go uh, and the first thing you gotta do is put package main which is basically telling go that this um, go source file is part of the main package for our program uh, and that's good that's what we want so in a go program you have a main function and this would normally run automatically when you compile this to an executable or when you run your program in development um, but for a DLL we don't need to actually uh, fill this with anything because a DLL is not going to run anything automatically uh, but it does need to be here in order for it to compile correctly so I'm just gonna leave that there leave it empty uh, and then we're going to move on uh, the other key thing that we'll need is to import C which allows us to make a DLL file basically it imports the go C library, which from what I understand is kind of just like an interoperability thing. Um, and that allows us to uh, use C specific stuff, which we'll need because that's what GameMaker expects. And it also allows us to export functions uh, in the context of a DLL. So the first function that we can make 
is probably most DLL example tutorials kind of have this uh, simple math thing um, where it's like kind of adds two numbers together. So we'll make one of those. Um, and this syntax is the function, the name, and then this is the return type. So this function is expected to return a float64. And a float64 is just a double. When you go to create an extension in GameMaker, um, everything has to be a string or a double. Uh, and float64 and double are the same for the purposes of Go, at the very least. Uh, and we'll have it take an argument. And so the name of the argument comes first. And then we also have to say the type of the argument. So we'll say that this function is going to uh, accept a number, a double. And then we'll have it return that value plus one, which is very exciting. Uh, now, in order for this to be available in our DLL, we have to add this special comment, export add one. And when we compile this as a DLL or a shared library, um, this little comment here is going to tell Go that this should be a, an external function, something that we're exposing to be used um, in some other program. And in our case, that's going to be a GameMaker extension. And so right now we have the, basically the most simple example that we could possibly have, just one function. Uh, so this is a good time to test things out. Um, so to build your DLL, you have to type in uh, go build. That's how you're going to build all of your Go projects. But to make it build a DLL rather than an EXE, uh, you have to do some things first. So the first thing we need to do is do dash O, and this is, the dash O stands for output, and this is going to be followed by the name of our DLL. We can name it whatever we want. Uh, I'll name it example.dll. Uh, but one thing uh, is important to remember is that if you install everything that I installed uh, and mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is going to give you a 64-bit DLL. And when you make a 64-bit DLL, GameMaker, uh, at least according to the documentation, expects underscore x64 to be part of the name of the DLL. I suppose it hints to GameMaker that this is a 64-bit DLL, so it can handle that correctly. Uh, so that's the first thing. And then the next thing we're going to do is do dash build mode. And this is where we are telling Go, don't build a executable, like a binary file. Build a C shared uh, binary or output, however you want to say it. And C shared is just the way that we tell it. What we're looking for is a shared library, otherwise known as a DLL in our case. Uh, the next thing we need to do, well, I suppose this is an optional step, but I found it online, so it must be true. If we do LD flags uh, and for its value, we put dash s and space dash w. Now, I copy pasted that from a forum answer that I found, but I did look into it. And from what I uh, found, what I can understand, that actually just omits some information from the final DLL file that's not actually required for the DLL to work properly. And it ends up making the DLL a smaller file and it doesn't have um, extra bloat in it. So that's working for me. <laughs> so I'm going to show it to you and, and it'll probably work for you too. And then the last thing we need to do is type in the name of the file that we actually want to compile, the name of the Go script. And I named my main.go. And I'll go ahead and hit enter and see what happens. And after a few seconds, we get some files spit out. So we have a DLL file and a header file. Uh, if you don't specify that the extension for the output is a DLL, this is actually a different type of file, one that can be imported to an existing uh, C program by C code. And so it gives you the header file automatically. This should go hand in hand with it. Uh, but we don't actually need it because the DLL does not actually need it. Uh, so now we're just left with this and we're already set to import that as a GameMaker extension. So I'm going to switch over to GameMaker. I already have a project open. Uh, obviously, nothing is in it. But let's set up a new extension. So in this extension, I won't even rename it. We can do add file. And I already cut the folder open, example x64. So I'll double click this. And in our functions section, we'll do add function. And the name, this is going to be our GML name. We can just do add one. And external name is what it was exported as. And so if we look here, 
I did export add one, which just so happens to be the same name as the function that I defined, but this could actually be anything up here in the comment. But this is how I did it. I exported it as add one. So we come back over here and put add one. Uh, this is going to return a double, otherwise known as a float 64 from go land. Uh, and this is also accepting an argument, a another double. And we're just going to add one to whatever we pass. So with that in place, let me add a object. And let's say on space bar press, we will show debug message add one, and I'll put one in there. So if this works, when we press the space bar, it should show two in the console. One plus one is two last time I checked. Uh, let me add it to my room. I chose this nice obnoxious light yellow color. It's very good for the eyes. Okay space and you can see we're getting a two there so that is working just fine uh, but I'm not done quite yet I want to go back here and show you how to work with strings this was a little trickier for me to find out again I'm not usually a C programmer or a low-level programmer so it took me a little bit to figure this one out but hopefully this will speed up the process for anyone else trying to get into this uh, so let's make another function and we'll say, uh, say hello, we'll make a greeting. And then I'll say val, and this will accept a string as an argument, um, but in order to accept a string from a C program or a program that is expecting your DLL to work like a C program, you need to put something special as the type. You might think it's string, but of course it's never that simple. We need to do star, which is uh, how you denote a pointer to some other place in memory. C dot char, char, however you want to say that. Uh, and we can do C dot char because we're inputting the C uh, package here up top, which lets us uh, use uh, C stuff in our program. And so this is saying that we expect val to be a pointer to a C uh, character place in memory, which is going to be the string that we pass from GameMaker. Uh, and this will also return a C character pointer. And what I'll do is we'll do return um, hello plus the name for the string that they gave us. No semicolons and go. Um, so there are a couple issues with this code. Um, these red squiggles are actually false. That is a problem, I think, with the um, the extension, the Go extension for VS Code. But if I reload the window, sometimes it kind of tricks it into fixing itself a little bit. Uh, but there is a problem down here. And the problem is that strings in Go, yeah, now it's, it's telling me the right thing. Strings in Go uh, are not the same as strings in C. I mean, these are pointers to C strings. Uh, and this is a, str a string literal. So we need to do some trickery here. The first thing we need to do is convert the C string that was passed into a string that Go can use. And the way that we do that is C Go string, just like that. Uh, and this is giving me an issue because I, again, it's something wrong with the extension. If I reload this page, it'll all work, but I promise that is correct. Uh, and then the other thing we need to do is convert this whole thing, which is now a string, uh, back into a C string because that's what game maker expects. So we're gonna have to wrap this whole thing in C C string like that. And I'm going to reload my window. It's quite annoying that it doesn't work how I expect it to work. Um, but it's a problem with uh, Visual Studio Code and not the code itself. So if you use another editor, you won't have this problem. But for now, this seems to be an issue. Uh, anyway, this is how we do it. So this will turn a Go string into a C string that an external program would expect, like GameMaker. Uh, and this is the opposite. It, it changes a C string into a string that Go can work with. And so this is a very basic function that will put hello in front of any string that we give it, uh, which is, again, very fun. And we have to export this as well. And I'll export it the same way. And then I will build it the same way. The terminal looks a little messed up here, but I did just run the exact same command, uh, the go build. And then once it's done, you see I put that header file back. I don't even need to delete it. I can just leave it there. Uh, but this DLL is updated. So let's hop back over to GameMaker. 
And I could, there are ways to re replace this uh, without doing this deleting and re-adding thing, but I can go ahead and just do it just to really cement how this is done. Add one, add one. Uh, this returns a double and accepts a double, but now we have one more add function. Uh, say hello. Whoops, two ages. Say hello, and this is going to return a string and accept a string. And so now, after all that, we can copy paste this line and type say hello, and I'll put my name in there. Go ahead and run things. And now we have this, I'll press space, and we see uh, two and hello Topher, hello. So yeah, that's the, the quick rundown of everything that I've learned about making a DLL with Go and making it work with GameMaker. Um, it took me a while to figure all this stuff out, so hopefully this knowledge will help somebody else who's maybe getting into Go or wants to learn how to make DLLs and wants to learn uh, doing it with an easy language. And I think that Go is pretty easy to pick up and learn, uh, especially as somebody who doesn't often work with languages like this. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So yeah, I haven't done a whole lot of testing with this. Um, this is as far as I've gotten, but I'm pretty sure that you can uh, take things from here. If you're learning Go, uh, if you look at what else Go can do, it can do quite a lot. I'm sure that you could come up with some interesting DLL ideas, uh, at the very least, uh, using this method. Uh, and yeah, hopefully somebody out there finds this interesting. Uh, I've had a lot of fun learning about all this stuff, and hopefully it's uh, helpful to somebody else too. Okay, bye.